Hello everyone, hope you're well, hope you're doing alright guys. Today I'm going to be buying oil through to the upside. Now before I go to the charts and I show you my technical trade for oil, first I want to explain the whole fundamental perspective for oil and show you guys the things that I look at on a day-to-day -day basis in order to determine the direction of the oil markets. So those are the things that help me determine the direction of the markets today and they are the same things that are going to help me determine the direction of the oil markets in the upcoming days. So let's get right into the fundamentals first and then I can go to the charts and show you from a technical perspective the trade that I am taking for oil so guys i posted this piece right here on october 19 all right for oil that describes what i believe the four things that are controlling the oil markets right now and we're going to take them one by one and describe what's happening to them today in order to determine the direction of the markets today now let's start with the first thing guys opec raisin oil production now listen guys opec are a group of countries that meet every single month and decide whether they are going to cut oil production down or whether they are going to raise oil production up. If they decide to raise oil production up, then the prices of oil go down. If they decide to cut oil production, then the prices of oil go up. Now, in the beginning of the year, Trump asked OPEC to lower oil prices down. He was like, guys, can you please lower oil prices down because we want inflation to go down. We want fuel prices to go down. We want the prices of other products as well to go down. And therefore, can you please lower oil prices down? OPEC accepted and they started raising oil production. So every month for the last year, OPEC has been meeting and deciding to raise oil production. Now guys, in order to understand why raising oil production brings oil prices down, it is just enough for you to understand that when you create more of something, you decrease its value. This is Economics 101. I don't believe I need to go in a lot of details when it comes to this. However, I'll just give one simple example. When you print more money, you decrease the value of the money. When you create more of something, you decrease its value. And therefore, this is exactly what OPEC is doing right here. It is creating more oil to reduce its value price. Now, in their last meeting, OPEC decided to raise oil production by 137,000 barrels per day. Now, usually, when OPEC raises oil production, as I told you in the uh, beginning of this video, that this usually tumbles oil prices down. However, the thing is, guys, that for every month for the last year, OPEC has been raising oil production. There's a thing, guys. Countries cannot just raise oil production infinitely. They cannot do that. Because at the end of the day, every country has limited staff and limited equipment. They cannot produce oil infinitely. There is a certain max capacity where they're like, we cannot produce any more oil. So therefore, OPEC raising oil production is bearish news for oil. However, there is a small problem. Some countries can't raise oil production anymore. They are at max capacity already when it comes to their staff and machinery's capabilities. OPEC has been raising oil production for the last year. So a lot of countries have, have already reached max capacity. So this bearish news raising oil production is not as bearish as people think as some countries are already at max capacity and can't actually deliver this increase in production. What I'm trying to say here, raising oil production is a decision that OPEC is taking on paper. This is what they're telling the media and this is what they're deciding on paper. Reality is, on the ground, practically, not everyone can raise oil production as countries, a lot of countries are already at max capacity and they cannot raise oil production further. So, while people are looking at this news as bearish, I am not looking at it as bearish. I believe it has no effect on the markets because smart money knows that countries are already at max capacity and countries cannot raise oil production realistically, and this is only a decision taken on paper. So it has no effect on the markets. I don't believe it is as bearish as retailers believe. All right, that's it for number one. Now, the second thing that controls oil prices is peace in the Middle East, whether there's a war in the Middle East or peace in the Middle East. Now, war in the Middle East, guys, raises oil prices, as we doubt that some Middle Eastern countries are not going to be capable of delivering their batch of oil amidst uh, war. 
right? Which makes oil more expensive. Now, peace in the Middle East does the exact opposite. Therefore, peace in the Middle East is bearish in use for oil. Right now, we have, we've seen oil prices for the past week melt down as soon as the peace deal between Gaza and Israel has been announced right now my question is will peace in the middle east remain because a ceasefire happened between israel and hamas however israel's main condition for peace with gaza is for hamas to disarm and as we've seen so far hamas refuses to disarm will that be restarting the war so in my opinion that ceasefire that happened between gaza and israel is very fragile now on the weekend we've seen the ceasefire being breached so therefore, as I said before the weekend, that that peace is very fragile, on the weekend, they ended up breaching that ceasefire. So as I told you guys right here, if we see news about that war possibly restarting, it's going to be bullish news for oil. And this weekend, this is exactly what we've seen. They breached the ceasefire on the weekend, and then on Monday or Sunday, they were like, okay, you know what, we'll go back to it. So that proved to the whole world that showed the whole world that the ceasefire is fragile it is not as strong as we thought it might be now to be completely honest with you i didn't think it was strong to begin with but anyway this is what people believed and it drove oil prices through to the downside however we've seen this weekend with proof that the ceasefire is fragile it can get breached at any point in time and this is what happened uh, this weekend right after i've written this piece right here so first of all we've had the opec news right there which i believe are not bearish because countries cannot apply it and then we have peace in the middle east being breached the ceasefire being breached which i believe is bullish news for oil at that specific point now let's move on to number three number three guys is very simple russia and ukraine all right russia is a major oil producer and therefore similar to the situation in the middle east here if there is more peace in russia then guess what oil prices tumble down if this war between russia and ukraine escalates then oil prices go up now at the point where i've written uh, this tweet trump was amidst talks with putin if he solves the ukraine versus russia situation oil prices will tumble down further similarly to peace in the middle east however if he fails to do so then some countries like india might punish russia by stopping importing its oil which it looks like it's already doing it and ukraine will target further russian oil refineries leading oil prices to soar to the upside now to summarize this if the if the war in russia and ukraine escalates oil prices go up if the war between russia and ukraine de-escalates then oil prices go down what we've seen yesterday and i posted this on twitter as well or x whatever you want to call it we've seen that russia has refused a ceasefire with ukraine and therefore this is uh, a hint that the russian and ukrainian war is escalating not de-escalating it is escalating so trump was like hey russia can we go on a ceasefire with ukraine and then we can discuss peace talks in a summit that we can hold in a few weeks russia was like no i don't want to go on a ceasefire and then trump was like well then what's the point of a summit if we cannot even agree on a ceasefire and they cancel that summit so it looks like the war between russia and ukraine is right now escalating and therefore this is bullish news for oil so again what do we have here this opec news is not affecting the markets because countries cannot apply it this right here is bullish because the ceasefire has been breached over the weekend russia and ukraine is bullish right now because russia and ukraine are escalating and russia refused a ceasefire with ukraine now let's go to number four number four u.s oil inventories guys listen every week the usa issues a report stating how much oil they have in their inventories the less oil they have, the more bullish for oil. Them having less oil signals that there's a lot of demand for oil. That's why they have less of it. Guys, logical. If I have a shoes store, for example, and you come to me today and you're like, Roy, how much shoes do you have in your stock? How much shoes do you have in your inventories? And I'm like, I have 100,000 shoes. You're like, okay. You walk away and you come back next week. Next week, you ask me the same question. You're like, Roy, how much shoes do you have in your inventories? And I'm like, well, now I have 30,000 shoes. So the number of shoes that I have in my inventories went down from 100,000 to 30,000. What does that mean? 
it means most probably that I sold 70,000 of shoes. That's why the number in my inventories went down from 100,000 to 30,000. That means that there is demand for my shoes. People want my shoes, they are buying it, and that's why the number went down from 100,000 to 30,000. It is the same thing for oil. If oil inventories go down, it means there is high demand for oil. If oil inventories go up, it means that there is less uh, demand uh, for oil. And therefore, the less oil they have, the more bullish for oil. The more oil they have, the more bearish for oil. Now, last week, guys, at the time of writing this report right here, last week, US oil inventories showed more oil in their inventories, which is bearish for oil. That was for last week. Now, today, guys, Wednesday, uh, oil report has been uh, done uh, in the morning, and they have less oil. So, as I told you here, if the next report shows us less oil, that would be bullish for oil. And today's morning report showed us less oil. Now, there's another report upcoming in a few hours that I will be keeping an eye on. But the preliminary report that we had this morning showed us that we have less oil, which is bullish for oil. So as you guys can see, everything is setting up in a way that is bullish for oil. US oil inventories is setting up in a way that is bullish for oil. Russia and Ukraine is escalating bullish for oil. Peace in the Middle East, ceasefire was breached. Uh, bullish for oil. This OPEC decision isn't actually being applied because countries cannot raise oil production any further, which is not bearish for oil. So it's, it will not affect the markets. So everything is setting up in a way that is bullish for oil. And that's why I'm intensely bullish for oil right now. So let's go to the charts and discuss the trade that I have for oil. A trade that I have already taken last night because the Russian and Ukrainian news were announced last night and I saw a specific entry setup that I could go ahead and get a use of, which is right here. The market targeted these lows, took them out and then started reversing through to the upside and I saw an opportunity to enter and therefore I entered this trade through to the upside. Now I'm not going to be exiting this trade right here. Why? Because I entered fundamentally, I entered due to fundamental reasons and I'm going to exit also due to fundamental reasons. So I'm going to wait for bearish fundamental news for me to exit. That's it. Today, as I told you in the beginning of the video, we have crude oil inventories to be announced and therefore as a result of those crude oil inventories showed us bearish news for oil, I'm going to exit. Otherwise, I am totally bullish uh, for oil and I believe it needs to go up for a multitude of reasons that I uh, explained in the uh, beginning of the video and therefore I'm just looking for oil to push up. Now, from a technical perspective, we can see that oil pushed down and liquidated these lows and if I go to an even higher time frame, I can see a huge liquidations through to the now side happened the moment we crossed that $60 level. Look at the $60 level right here. It held a huge support line right there and the stop losses of this huge support line are below that low from a higher time frame perspective. This low was just liquidated through to the downside and oil is reversing from that low. So we can also see the trade confirmed even from a technical higher time frame perspective basically. And therefore that's what I'm looking at for on oil. All right, everyone. So as you guys can see here, oil is just rocketing through to the upside right now. We received some new news this morning for oil. We received, uh, first of all, U.S. is sanctioning some uh, Russian oil companies due to the uh, Russian war on Ukraine. Very expected, right? That's number one. Number two is the crude oil inventories report that I told you guys that I was waiting for was actually bullish for oil. There was less oil in their inventories than uh, expected and therefore that's great news for oil as well that has led oil to push through to the upside. I'm going to continue holding this trade uh, for now until the market gives me any reason to basically close. All right, that's it for oil and I'll talk to you guys soon.